So we've seen how optimal monetary policy looks like in our dynamic model. Um, and we said that, you know, if we wanted to, if we wanted to apply the very simple formula, uh, either theta star equal one or u star is equal to square root uv, uh, in the dynamic model, you need to make uh, two assumptions on the parameters of the dynamic model. So first, rho is equal to one, so that's the recruiting cost. <coughs> that's because to obtain this very simple result that uh, optimal tightness is one and u star is square root uv, you need to have this correspondence between uh, vacancies and recruiters. It has to be that each vacancy requires one recruiter. So rho has to be equal to one in the dynamic model. And the second thing is that uh, the beverage curve uh, must be an hyperbola. And so what I want to discuss uh, briefly is whether that's possible to have an hyperbola in our dynamic model. Uh, are there parameter values for which the Bayreuth curve is an hyperbola? And you will see that the answer is uh, yes, <laughs> with a little caveat. You will see the Bayreuth curve actually cannot be an exact hyperbola, but it can be uh, locally, of course, an hyperbola, but also almost everywhere uh, an hyperbola. Um, and, and therefore, for a specific parameter value, so especially for a specific elasticity in the matching function. Uh, and so let, let's let's see that, and then that will, I think it's a useful way to establish a connection between um, structural models and the sufficient statistic, statistic approach, but to link the structural and sufficient statistic approach, I think it, it's, uh, it's kind of a useful exercise. Uh, so what's the beverage curve in the dynamic model? So the beverage curve in the dynamic model, um, so we said that it's a link between tightness and unemployment, so it's lambda divided by lambda plus f of theta. Now, of course, so, you know, that's a link between unemployment rate and tightness, but standard beverage curves are a link between unemployment rate and vacancy rate, so we have to reshuffle these things a little bit. So this is u is equal to lambda divided by lambda plus f of theta is the job finding rate. Uh, the job finding rate, it's mu times theta, but theta is v divided by u to the power of one minus eta, uh, where eta is a matching elasticity uh, in the matching function. So it's uh, the elasticity of the matching function with respect to unemployment. And this is just the job separation rate. Okay, and so now what I want is to re-express that as a V as a function of U. So let's try to do that. <clears throat> so here I can rewrite this as lambda U plus mu V one minus eta Uh, yes, and then you have a u divided by one minus uh, u divided by one minus eta, so that's just u eta is equal to lambda. Uh, okay, so then if we reshuffle this thing, we get that v one minus eta u eta is equal to lambda one minus u. Okay, and then reshuffling everything here, we get that V one minus eta is equal to lambda one minus U divided by um, mu U eta. Okay, and then now we get like the beverage curve in standard form. V as a function of U is lambda one minus U divided by mu U eta to the power of one over one minus eta. So, so this is the beverage curve in uh, our dynamic model.
So now key thing is that uh, is to compute the elasticity of vacancies with respect to unemployment, and in particular, uh, try to see how close to one we can get because an hyperbola has an elasticity of one. Uh, so compute here uh, d log v over d log u, so elasticity of v with respect to u, so we have uh, 1 over 1 minus eta that comes out, that's the power exponent, then we have to take the elasticity of what's inside, uh, elasticity of the numerators as lambda 1 minus u, uh, so this is just the elasticity of uh, 1 minus u, and the elasticity of 1 minus u we know that it's going to be minus u over 1 minus u, and then the elasticity of u with respect to u, that's just 1. And the minus u over 1 minus u is just the weight of minus u in the sum 1 minus u. You know, when you take the elasticity of a sum, it's the weighted average uh, of uh, the weighted average of the elasticity of each component of the sum. So we have this, and then we have to subtract the elasticity of the denominator, but that's very easy, it's just eta. All right, so then if we take the minus out, it's minus 1 over 1 minus 10. Of course, the Bavridge curve is always uh, downward sloping, so it's normal that there's a minus. And then we've got eta plus u over 1 minus u. Um, so, of course, something that we see immediately is that the elasticity of the Bavridge curve is not constant. It depends on u. So it means that actually the, you know, the Bavridge curve that comes out of the ma matching model is not strictly um, isoelastic. Uh, whereas in the data, it looks like, you know, it looks like it is isoelastic. So here you could say, oh, well, then this matching model Bavridge curve doesn't fit uh, the data. However, some, is there something that you have to notice uh, and that hopefully is going to be reassuring that you see that uh, so eta 1 minus eta these are constants so what brings variation in the elasticity is this uh, u over 1 minus u but of course in practice u is like say 5% 1 minus u you know it's like 95% okay so u over 1 minus u you know, it's 5%. Eta is uh, the matching elasticity, so that's typically, you know, 0 0.5. All right? And so what we can see is, therefore, that u over 1 minus u, it's an order of magnitude smaller than eta. And so the variations in u over 1 minus u, they are going to be an order of magnitude smaller than eta. And so basically, the variation in the elasticity will be an order of magnitude smaller than uh, than the elasticity. And so it means that it'll be very hard, it would be very hard to see this fluctuation. Uh, it would be very hard to see this fluctuation in the data. So what that means is that what we see from all of this is that, uh, so eta is an order of magnitude greater than u over one minus u. So the model beverage, elastic, uh, beverage curve is almost um, isoelastic. Not perfectly, but almost, and uh, to a degree that you wouldn't be able to see the data because you have an order of magnitude of difference. Uh, something that's interesting is that actually you can code up that, uh, you can code up that uh, beverage curve and compare it to uh, an isoelastic curve and see how different it is uh, and then see if you can see the difference in the data. That's an interesting exercise. Um, so we have a curve that's almost isoelastic. Oops. So that's good. Uh, so this is going to fit well into uh, the framework that we've used to derive our efficient tightness and unemployment gap. Now the question is, we said to get the very simple stuff, the so theta star is equal to one, u star equal square root u, you need not only a beverage curve that is elastic, which has to be an hyperbola. So we want the elasticity to be equal to one. Uh, and so you can see that a simple way to have that uh, <clears throat> So for instance, if eta is equal to 0 0.5, which is the standard calibration uh, of the matching function of the matching elasticity that dates back to uh, the Petrongolo and Pissaridis survey that said that, you know, that looked at a number of studies and, and showed that 
um, overall 0.5, the good calibration of the matching elasticity. Then we get d log v d log u that's equal to, and then you have so you have minus 2, 0.5 plus u over 1 minus u, and so you get that's just uh, minus 1 <coughs> plus u over 1 minus u. And of course, we said u over 1 minus u is like 5% or something like this. Um, so, in a, so with uh, eta is equal to 0.5, d log v, d log u, it's approximately equal to minus 1. Uh, and so if you take like a standard calibration of the matching function, you in fact find that your beverage elasticity is approximately uh, 1, uh, maybe just a little bigger because you have this extra u over 1 minus u. But so your beverage curve is almost isoelastic and therefore the theta star is equal to 1 and u star equals square root of uv. This is almost whole, you know, so you could use that uh, in the model. If you wanted to be more accurate, you could set an eta that's just a little bit smaller such that uh, if you wanted to have an elasticity that's exactly 1, uh, at least at the optimum, what you could do is, uh, so if you, oops. Uh, to have hyperbola at uh, the efficiency point. You can set eta uh, such that eta over 1 minus eta plus u 1 minus eta 1 minus u where you use u star is equal to uh, is equal to 1. So if you take u star roughly 4% in the data, uh, so you can set eta 1 minus eta plus 0 0.04, 1 minus eta times 0 0.96 equal to 1. And so that gives uh, an eta that's just a tiny bit, uh, a tiny bit smaller. So, uh, eta is equal to 0 0.4. Um, 4, I think, is uh, going to work perfectly here. So if eta is equal to 0 0.44, just below 5, then you get, at the efficiency point, you get uh, you get an hyperbola. And so uh, then theta cycle 1, you start with square root uv, that, you know, they'll be almost uh, exactly uh, optimal in the model. And then you can, you know, and so then you really have a, a structural model that fits perfectly into the sufficient statistic framework. Uh, if you don't make this assumption, you have to, you know, and so you don't have, you have an isoelastic curve, but not an hyperbola, or you will introduce a Rochlin cost that's not one, then you have to use a more general formula for theta star and u star. Uh, 